for someone who has sold over 200 million copies, people say there's no way this guy could ever uh, get writer's block, but it happens. And so uh, talk a little bit about kind of what the premise of the book is. I like how the book opens up. I don't want to give too much away, but the book opens up uh, with Mickey, Mickey Howler, who is the main character, who's a lawyer, by the way, a slick lawyer, um, who is driving home, gets stopped by the cops, and there's blood dripping from his trunk. And the next thing we know, he is in the slammer uh, giving legal advice. So give us a, a quick synopsis of, of what this book is about. Well, you know, there's that adage. It's attributed to Abraham Lincoln that a attorney who takes himself on as a client has a fool for a client. Um, <laughs> in other words, lawyers should not defend themselves. But I put Mickey Haller in this position where he's charged with a crime. You know, I've written about him before, so I'm not fooling anyone when I when he says I didn't do it. I don't think people are going to be going to this book saying, did he, didn't he? Um, so I think we come into the first page thinking this is a setup. Mickey thinks it's a setup. And so the book's about how does he get out of this setup? How does he carry that ax to this tree? And uh, he has a big difficulty in front of him because uh, he's been, as you said, thrown in the slammer. And the bail is so high, he can't afford it. So he's kind of strategizing and, and building his defense from a jail cell. And, of course, he has a good team. People come in and visit him. He has investigators. He has Harry Bosch even wanting to help him out. He has an ex-wife who's a prosecutor wanting to help him out. So, so he has a lot of help. But I thought, you know, as a challenge to me as a writer, I've written 34 books before this. Let's do something where the, the main character is primarily sedentary, set yeah. in a, stuck in a jail, and he has to figure out how to get out of, uh, you know, what is the biggest jam of his life. Wow. And so, you know, people look at you and they say, okay, Harry Bosch, which is huge. We love it. Uh, it's on Amazon Prime, uh, the series. I read all the Bosch books, uh, all the Mickey Holler books. People say, okay, where does this guy get his material from? So quickly take us through what your process is like. Do you outline things? Do you rip it from the headlines? How do you create these great stories? Well, I do a little bit of everything, but primarily I view myself as a fisherman. I'm always throwing out a net and then pulling the net in and seeing what I got. And for me, throwing out the net means spending time with the kind of people I like to write about. I happen to like to write about detectives, defense attorneys, sometimes reporters. Um, and so I spend time with these kind of people. And, um, you know, they're all good. Everybody's a good storyteller. And everybody feels that whatever they do in life, they're probably not, they're probably misunderstood. You know, you, we don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's really like to solve a murder or defend somebody in a murder case. And so I use my reporting skills, which, you know, you know, I haven't been a reporter in 25 years, but I still have some of those instincts and some of those skills. And, you know, and I go to work. I do a lot of interviews. I, um, I, I spend time. I take cops to breakfast and so forth. And invariably something comes up in the net that I instinctively know, okay, I can, I can build something around that, um, you know, and, and then, then I start adding on my own layers. Like with this book, uh, at the heart of this murder is actually a financial crime that's based on a real crime that somebody told me about. And it, I just thought it was genius from the bad guy's point of view. And then I th thought, like, how do I add to that? And how do I get Mickey Haller into trouble with it? And so on and so forth. And before you go, talk to us about, you know, what you see for the future uh, for Bosch uh, and, and for Holler. Um, of course, your fans want more. Is there more to come? Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. You write a book, and I'm sure you do this with your guy. You you then have a kind of Monday morning quarterbacking session where you say, "Have I done everything I I have to say about with this character? Is there something more to say through him or her, or is there something about this character that you can peel off and it can be meaningful and have resonance for for the for the readers?" And uh, I've been very lucky with I I have discarded characters or I stopped writing about characters in the past, but for some reason, Haller, Bosch, they still speak to me. They, there's still something to be said about them. And as you mentioned earlier, I kind of write in real time in the year that my books come out, but the characters also age in real time. And so they're, uh, at least Bosch is really getting up there. And I don't look at, at that as a handicap. I look at it as this is interesting to explore someone who's near the end of uh, perhaps when probably a bad word usefulness, but finding ways to be useful, to still be able to close cases, and that's really intriguing for me. And so as long as I'm intrigued by these characters, 
uh, people will be, have the opportunity to see more of them. Well, the inimitable Michael Connolly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for all your great work, man. Thank you for allowing us to choose the law of innocence as our pick of the month for November for our Word Power Book Club. Thanks, man. I really appreciate it.